Hey guys and welcome to my longer review here of the Asus Padphone 2 versus the Samsung Galaxy S3. So I've made a shorter version uh, already on my other YouTube channel called Daily Phone Reviews. So that video is around 15 minutes in length. I think it actually can be 30 minutes. So if you want to see a shorter version a, uh, of a comparison between the Padphone 2 versus the Galaxy S3, go and check that out in the description down below. Uh, but if you want to see more of a deeper video here uh, with uh, some browser comparisons and some gaming uh, uh, comparisons here, then I suggest that you watch this video instead. Uh, so, first of all, this uh, is a review unit that I got from Asus themselves. So, uh, that basically means that uh, it was... Um, it was 20 people in my country that got the Padphone 2 to review and the people that will uh, and some people some of those review guys will get to keep the Padphone 2 so if so uh, if uh, you guys leave a ton of likes on this video if you leave a lot of good feedback in the comments or use comment a lot and share this video with your friends uh, the the possibility that I will get to keep the Padphone 2 is very big and that's awesome because then I can invest that in maybe buying the Galaxy S4 or HTC One X Plus or the new HTC One, maybe the new Xperia C, we will see. So I thought that one of the best possible review here are the Galaxy S3, one very high-end phone, the most sold phone from last year versus the Asus Padphone 2. Uh, I've been playing around now with the Padphone 2 for around a day. And I gotta I got tell you, I think it's amazing. It's, it's so amazing and it, it, it is so much like a Galaxy S3. It's so, such an amazing phone in terms of build quality, in terms of the software that you get and the hardware and all of the components here built inside. It's really, really amazing. So if we look at the price first, these devices are very interested in price. So if we fire up the Price Buy app here, um, I can't actually find the Padphone right now in this Price Buy app, uh, but I do know that we can first pick up the Galaxy S3 here. So we can see how much a Galaxy S3 costs right now. Of course, this is the 4G variant of the Galaxy S3 that costs a little bit more, okay? See the brightness on full here again also. You can see that you can get a Galaxy S3 for around 400 pounds and it's probably a little bit more if you go to 4G variants and um, the Padphone 2 that I have right now, the review unit that I got from Asus, it does cost around um, it does cost around 500 pounds but then it's also the uh, the 32 gigabyte variant that's a little bit more expensive but if you can find the Padphone 2 there's a 16 gigabyte variant as well uh, you can probably pick it up for around 420 pounds or something like that so in terms of pricing these devices are very very similar now I don't know if this variant I do know that the specs list that the Padphone 2 should be available in a 4G variant uh, but in my country, of course, when I got this review unit, I didn't get it with the carrier. Uh, so I'm really not sure if this one supports uh, LTE, but there should be an LTE variant of the Padphone 2 out. Of course, that's a major thing for me here that the Galaxy 3 here, it, it's on a, a, a Tele2 carrier, it's a Swedish, a Swedish carrier uh, that uh, support 4G sp speeds, which is really awesome. Uh, because then you can tether your smartphone to your computer and get amazing internet wherever now you are if you live in a big city. So also one thing here that we can see here, definitely when we are inside of this Price Buy app here is that you can even see that the screen, uh, you get a Super IPS screen here versus the Super AMOLED screen here. You can see how much brighter it is. Uh, so th this sc the screen here is something going to be amazing in terms of reading, uh, let's say in the Kindle app or just when you're doing stuff when you have a lot of white in the background. You can really see how much amazing it is going to be for especially people that use their phone a lot when they're outdoor. And the reason why it's so bright is because it has this Super IPS Plus display and it has the outdoor mode. So uh, you can see here we do have the outdoor mode turned on right now. We can go back to normal mode and then you can see that it kind of looks like a Galaxy S3 but the outdoor mode really really is amazing. 
because that's a problem I have with my Super AMOLED screen on my Galaxy Note 2. This is not a Galaxy Note 2, but they do have the same displays. And it is kind of hard sometimes to see when you're out and the sun is shining. So if you first, before we dig into the specs, uh, I want to take a look here in terms of the uh, design aspect over here. Um, the the kind of is the same size here. You can definitely see the screen is a little bit bigger here on the Galaxy S3, so 4.8 versus 4.7. 4 uh, but the thing is that you do get some capacitive buttons down here, three capacitive buttons, and then you have the Asus logo, and you get sort of like a bump down here, which is making the device actually be uh, kind of the same size here, even though the screen is a little bit smaller. And then, you, of course, with the Galaxy S3, we do have a real or a hardware button, but then we have the two capacitive buttons on the side, a little bit more of a rounded off design. And then also, you get that plastic here, very, very slippery plastic. Uh, you also get plastic here on the, uh, on the pad phone, but more of a hard, hard case plastic. And then you have this metallic side, which is really reminding me of, of uh, the Apple iPhone. It really feels like they got inspired there a lot. Uh, the buttons, if you can see, it has like this metallic look and they feel really, really solid uh, when you tap on those. And I really enjoy that it has, first it start off big where the buttons are and then it goes down and become more slim. And it really feels like a well-made phone. And up here where you can see that we do have the SIM card tray and the headphone jack that in there in the middle. You can also see that we can't remove the back uh, which is making this device a little bit different compared to the Galaxy S3 because you can't remove the battery, you don't have an SD card option. Uh, that's the things that you do of course get with the Samsung Galaxy S3, you can remove the back and that's one of the things why people love Samsung products because you can remove it, let's say you drop it in water, uh, the device is still, it's, it's still fine. You can still, uh, usually when you drop it in water, uh, let the battery dry uh, or uh, dry on, on another place and uh, with some rice. And then you might just uh, have a device that still works the next day. Uh, if you take a look here at the back, which one also do I personally enjoy the most holding in my hand? I gotta say that the Padphone 2 actually feels a little bit more exclusive because of the solid buttons here. They don't feel plasticky. Uh, something has more of a plastic feeling here, more of a slippery feeling. It doesn't actually feel as good uh, as uh, the, uh, the Padphone here, but I definitely do enjoy that Samsung has a hardware button down at the bottom because that basically means that when the screen is turned on, uh, not turned on, you can actually uh, activate the phone on the front side. You can't do that with the pad phone too. Of course, uh, you get all the buttons here, volume up and down and power on button on the pad phone 2 on the right side, while on the Samsung smartphone, the Galaxy S3, you only get the power or uh, to turn on the phone here on the right side and then volume up and down is uh, as they usually are on the left side, okay? And uh, also the camera is really worth mentioning. We will take a look at it here pretty soon. Um, it's a 30 megapixel camera you get inside of the pad phone too. 30 megapixel that can record 720p video at 60 frames per second. That's pretty impressive. And then we do get an 8 megapixel shooter here on the Samsung Galaxy S3. Nothing weird over there. Uh, so, if we now fire up these two devices, and let's really start uh, to dig down a little bit in the software. Uh, so, first of course, we do have the home screens, as usually you have in Android. You can see that they have different transition effects. Uh, but the good thing with Android World, of course, is that you can customize this uh, with different launchers like Nova Launcher, Apex Launcher, and all those different ones. Uh, so you can really make the, the look of these two devices kind of look the same here on the front side. You can see that you have Asus own skin here, skinned uh, on top of Android, but it still looks a lot like Android 4.0. Uh, while Samsung has their own touch with, uh, which if you want to fire up the app drawer, it's here on the right side. So very, very easy to reach and then you have an apps page, you have the widget uh, widgets page, 
uh, while uh, on the, the uh, path until you have that in the middle. And really reminds of Android 4.0 ICS ice cream sandwich. It had this look uh, when you got it. So first you do have the normal apps and then you have the pad only app. Uh, because if you didn't know the pad phone, it's called pad phone because uh, you can get it bundled with the pad. And this is the pad. And if you wanna buy this one with the pad phone too, you can just plug in the phone on the back and then you can use it as a tablet. But then of course it will be a little bit more expensive, but it could definitely be worth it if you don't have a, pa a pad at the moment. And they call it the pad phone station. Um, if you don't have a tablet at the moment and you don't have a phone, it can really be a nice package there where you can save a lot of money. So this is how it looks like. You have apps, pad only, and then you have the widget page. So really, really similar over there. Uh, if you take a look uh, when we go down like this, you can see that they also have kind of a similar look. First, you have the, the area where you get all your incoming emails and notifications. And then you have a brightness slider here uh, where the pad phone 2 is better because you will have some better, it has this outdoor mode, which is really making the screen uh, bright. And then of course you do have the auto mode here on brightness. Then we do have the option here to toggle some quick settings. And that's of course very, very uh, they have the same kind of look over there. One good thing here with TouchWiz is that if you hold in a long time, it will go to that settings page. That's not something that you do have on the Pad Phone 2, but on the Pad Phone 2, you can rearrange these uh, things here uh, that you can see. And then of, uh, also on the Pad Phone 2, we do have the option to have a, on an audio wizard here that we all already have here from, uh, from uh, the notification area. Um, so we have the speech mode, the gaming mode, the movie mode. I'm not sure how, how, quite how good that, uh, good that one is, but hopefully it, it is pretty decent. And I might be able to do a video about that. And then you also have a quick Wi-Fi settings here that you can quickly go to. But then also it's better there in touch with that you just hold in a long time and then you will go to that settings area for that specific thing that you did tap. Also, if we go to the settings, you can see that they do have kind of a similar look here. Uh, but as with AMOLED screens, you do get a lot of vibrant colors. So black here in the menu, you can see both have black but black really, really, really look black on the AMOLED screen. So uh, you can just imagine how amazing the AMOLED screen is for watching movies on your device and on your tab here. So if you go down to the bottom, you can see that they have a very, very similar look and feel here in, in terms of settings and what you can do with the device. You have, of course, headering with both these two devices. So if you go back, go down and have a look about these two devices. When you get the Pad Phone 2, you will be getting it installed with Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean. So 4.1 Jelly Bean, amazing. And then also you can see here that with Android version 4.1.1 Jelly Bean, you get this, also that one when you buy the Galaxy S3 here, if you have the same model as me for the 4G variant. So that's good, they're both rocking 4.1 Jelly Bean. That means that you will be able to use Google Now. And if you don't know what Google Now is, it's basically like Google's uh, real Siri. Uh, it can tell where you are, how you can, uh, let's say you wanna go somewhere. It can tell you the bus that you need to take and the train that you need to take to get to that place. I can probably do more videos, but there's so many amazing videos about Google Now. Google Now is basically your own personal assistant for getting to places and it can will keep track of your packages and stuff that you get in your mail and um, you know different tracking ideas and stuff. But I'm not gonna go and dig that too much deep into that in this video. So that was a quick look here um, of uh, uh, all the UI itself, both, as I said, both have custom UIs. You get the touch with feel here, both for Anki and of course Android 4.1 Jelly, Jelly Bean, but with different skins. And you can get these two devices to look exactly similar uh, if, you diff uh, if you install different firmwares, um, like maybe you want to install Cyanogen mod, uh, you can get these devices to look exactly the same. Uh, overall, there's not that much different, but I really love the outdoor mode here on the uh, the the, uh, the pad phone too. So now if we dig into the specs area, because this is an interesting area.
So the first thing I want you to um, uh, look up where you live uh, is look up the price of these two devices if you're interested. Uh, see which one is the cheapest. Do you want to get the 16 gigabyte variant? Do, do you need 32 gigabyte variant? Uh, the second thing I also think that you want to look up is uh, does the Pathfinder 2 where you are uh, does it support 4G LTE? Uh, or do you, there, is there a carrier with the Pathfinder 2? I don't actually think there's too many with the Pathfinder 2 with 4G. But the Galaxy 3, uh, different, d d definitely a lot of carriers have an LTE variant of that one. So the first thing here that is uh, different and something that you um, want to check out is the, uh, the screen technology. So uh, when we look here at the specs, you get the Super IPS Plus LCD display here on the... Uh, uh, the Pathfinder 2. We will be doing some gaming here and uh, some Kindle reading But one thing I can definitely say about the screen right now is that it's amazing. It's uh, super bright. Okay It displays white colors amazing black not as good uh, but I think definitely it's gonna be awesome for browsing and uh, Not just browsing but also reading because usually when you do those two things you do have a lot of white in the background so we will be doing some of those testings here pretty soon. Uh, well, I think that the OMELED screen is more for uh, watching movies, uh, you know, play uh, movie playback, and use a lot of uh, more of a cartoon feeling. If you want to have, if you really love colors, different colors, you want to see them very, very, uh, you know, re re I'm not sure how you say it, but vibrant colors. You see, blue is really blue, green is really green. It can almost make that kind of cartoon feeling. That's how I you like to say it. Uh, I really like that. I really, really enjoy the AMOLED screens. Uh, but then I, I love the Super IPS screen here. That it's super bright when you're out and it's just amazing in that way. Uh, so both have 720p displays. Uh, 4.8 inch, the Galaxy 3, 4.7 inch here. Uh, kind of the same pixels per inch. So PPI is actually around 300. So it's actually very, very good. It's, it's just as an iPhone 5. Very, very good uh, PPI there for reading. 720p displays, uh, 720p resolution on both these two devices. Uh, also, two gigabytes of RAM on both these two devices. When you, uh, if you do, if you get the Galaxy 3, no, no the, not the 4G variant, you're probably only gonna have one gigabyte of RAM. And the Pathfinder 2 here comes with two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, there are also different, many different variants of the, both these two devices. 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte internal storage on both these two devices. Uh, so it all uh, comes down to what you want to use, and of course with the Galaxy S3 you do get the removable back, so you can insert a, a an extra 64 gigabyte SD card or replace the battery with a bigger battery, but then the back will be bigger. But if you really want to have a bigger battery, you can definitely pull that off. Uh, now we also come down to the camera that you actually do get a 13 megapixel camera here, and I'm very very sure is better than the one that you get on the Samsung Galaxy S3. So if you just fire up the camera software here, or we'll do that later on, uh, very, very soon here, but eight megapixel camera versus a 30 megapixel camera. Uh, you get a higher the front facing camera here, one with nine megapixel versus a one with two megapixel on the Pad Phone 2. Uh, so in terms of chipset also right now, uh, the Galaxy 3 is rocking on Samsung's own Exynos chipset, 4412 quad, uh, so it's Exynos 4, uh, while the Pathfinder 2 is rocking on a Qualcomm APQ8064 chipset. So both rocking on a quad-core processor here, 1.5 GHz crate one clocked on the Pathfinder 2, and a 1.4 GHz uh, based on Cortex A9 on the Galaxy S3. So a little bit of a difference there, but generally speaking, with the latest version of Android 4.1 or just Android Jelly Bean, you won't notice a difference because product powder is extremely smooth. It all comes down to uh, what you want to do. Like, I want to do some hardcore gaming. Well, then we'll, we'll talk about the GPU, but in terms of uh, scrolling and swiping and go in and out of apps, you won't really be able to tell the difference between these two quad core monsters. So, in terms of gaming, this is very interesting. Uh, you get Malai 400 MP on the Galaxy S3, same as with the Galaxy S2, but it's overclocked in the Galaxy S3, 200 megahertz, so around 400 megahertz uh, GPU, while on the Pathfinder 2, you get the Adreno 320 GPU. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's almost the same as in the Nexus 4. I know that an Exynos 4 or Nexus 4 is rocking on Adreno 300 GPU, and I'm pretty sure it could be the Adreno 321. Um, so, 
Also in colors, uh, the, Gal uh, the Pad Phone 2 is only available in black and white, while the Galaxy S3 comes in pebble blue, uh, you have the white variant, you have a brown variant, and red, black, and a gray variant, and you can see I have a, uh, the black variant here, the 4G1. Uh, just the battery here, last thing here on the spec side, you get 40 more milliamps on the Pad Phone 2, 2140 versus uh, 2100 milliamp. Uh, on the Samsung Galaxy S3. So let's jump back or jump into some testing right now. So as I said already, uh, in, in terms of pricing, uh, they should be, uh, I can't find the Padphone 2 uh, in the, this price buy app, but of course I definitely can find the Galaxy S3. It, it really comes down to where you live and uh, what variant you want. I mean, 4G, is that a big deal for you? If not, then you can get the Galaxy S3 for around 400 pounds. It's probably gonna be a little bit more expensive here, 450, 500 pounds maybe for Galaxy S3 uh, 4G variant. And that's about the same as you can get a 32 gigabyte pad phone 2 for. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, so if we start off by firing up the camera app on the uh, pad phone 2, you will notice an interesting thing here, and that is that you have a ton of different settings already from the start. When you move around the camera, it doesn't lag or anything like my Xperia uh, S did with the, the 30 megapixel camera. It takes pictures quick. And no, it didn't. Okay, it was a little bit slow. But it focuses in here, you can see very, very uh, good. And you have the zoom in feature down at the bottom. And then also what's good is when you're recording videos, when you're recording videos, you can always uh, focus, refocus, which is something that I definitely do enjoy. And that it can record 720p video at 60 frames per second. I'm pretty sure that's some kind of record or something. Uh, you have a bunch of different settings here on the side. If you wanna have a camera resolution to lower, let's say you have the only 16 gigabyte variant of the Pad Phone 2, and you wanna save up some stuff, you have some custom settings here uh, for black and white. You do have an auto shutter. Uh, you do it can rearrange a focus mode here to smart anti -fo or uh, focus. You can actually also disable the camera sound, the location service, so it doesn't know where you are. Anti flicker, if you see some flicker, that could be because you are in the wrong area. Maybe you live in the US and this one is at the 60 hertz, then you want to change that one if you do see some weird flicker. You do have an HDR mode, which is really popular for a lot of people, though. Uh, I'm pretty sure it takes three different pictures and then uh, makes it into one and then makes it a cool picture. Some people do enjoy it. So amazing 30, 30 megapixel camera. Uh, well, you, you get a good camera here also uh, on the Galaxy S3 of course. And it focuses in quick. It do have an auto burst mode actually that I'm pretty sure is quicker. Uh, than the one that you do get uh, on the uh, Pad Phone 2. It can really like burst, but you don't seem to have that much settings here. You do have some filters here that you can quickly uh, add to your pictures. <clears throat> and then I'm not sure if you can disable the sound when you take pictures. No, you can't. But of course you can just turn down the sound when you, uh, w before you open up the camera app. Now, let's see if we can focus in. Yeah, let's see, if we start making a video here, can we refocus? It actually seems like we can, so that's of course extremely good. So, to sum it up, you get an amazing camera on the Pad Phone 2, and a good camera on the Galaxy S3. Now, <clears throat> I know I didn't do a hardcore test here to see which one really is the best, but I'm pretty sure the newer sensor here is better on the Pad Phone 2. Even though, I mean, it's not all about the megapixels. It's definitely not all about the megapixels. Uh, so, let's fire up the Chrome. And right now, <clears throat> I, I, I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna use my home Wi-Fi. Uh, but I could also try to use my 4G here, my carrier, on my Galaxy S3, but that wouldn't make a difference because um, I'm using, the internet I'm using right now, it's already a mobile, 
uh, internet that is using Tele2 carrier in my country. So we will be using Wi-Fi for this little video here. So if we open up the browser on both these two devices, let's go to a website that has a lot of colors in it. I load up very very quick here on the um, the uh, Pathfinder 2 maybe because it loaded the page in the background but let's go to the full site here so I made a mistake So when we load up these sites here uh, and zoom in and out, let's just let it load. So some people have been complaining about the uh, uh, the pad phone or the, the Chrome browser uh, because some people say that it's bad. And I definitely can say that when I zoom in and out here, it definitely feels more optimized in the browser that you get. When you buy the S3, you can zoom in a ton, which I like, and that stops everything else uh, from rendering in the background. Um, but I mean, it's smooth here as well on the uh, uh, on the Pad Phone 2, but not as smooth I would um, I, I probably have to say. And in terms of loading speeds, it should be the same. Uh, yeah, clearly, as you can see, there's no real big difference. But white really looks better here on the Pathfinder 2. So, as I said there, the, the Super IPS Plus display here on the Pathfinder 2 really, really is amazing. Really amazing. But in terms of when we have a lot of colors, they really look about the same. You get a little bit more vibrant colors here on the S3, but yeah that's that's about it <clears throat> so re really really no big difference there in the browser the big difference is actually the display i would say so it's time now to take a quick look at some gaming i have far up the asphalt 7 game so uh, let's fire it up here shall we so we'll pick uh, this area gonna turn down the noise here and definitely you can see it way more white here uh, but more colorful here on the uh, S3 So let's start off here, uh, seeing the performance on the S3. So as you can see here, it's very, very smooth. No problem whatsoever with the FPS. Wow, if we take up the, uh, the pad from two, I can see, I can feel some lag. Some small lag, but then wow, the display definitely looks amazing in terms of the white colors. But not as smooth, not even close to as smooth as the uh, Mali 400 MP inside of the Galaxy S3. So definitely, they need to make some improvements here. <clears throat> it could be that it's a game loft game, but I do remember that the, the this game was uh, running amazing on the Nexus 4. That was having the same kind of GPU, so I really don't know why it is bad. 
But definitely a more safer alternative here is going with the Galaxy S3s. Uh, uh, go to Galaxy S3 if you want to be sure that you get uh, a good uh, game experience with uh, the most popular games out there. Uh, the, the GPU here, you can see that it's a little bit laggy and it's a little bit risky going with the Pathfinder 2 if you do enjoy a lot of gaming. But then, of course, it, it is an amazing GPU. Now, if we continue and uh, start uh, continuing this review here, speed test, we don't have to do that because it feels kind of weird to do that because uh, we are on the same Wi-Fi and they're using the same carrier. We can even take a look at some Amazon Kindle here, though. So you can see how much how reading looks like. So PPI about the same. You won't see any crispier. It could be a little. It is actually a little bit higher because it's a 4.7 instead of 4.8 inch screen. But can you notice a difference in terms of text? No, you you can't. You, you really can't see a difference there in in terms of text. The thing though that you can see that's different and that is way better, way 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 better with the Pathfinder 2 is that it's a lot brighter. The screen is just so, so much brighter, okay? So much better compared to the Galaxy S3's, a little bit more of a, or actually a lot, lot darker screen here. You can really see why you would want to pick up the Pathfinder 2 Super IPS Plus LCD display. So that's, that's a very, very big thing over there. And um, let's also fire up YouTube here a little bit quick. Okay. And uh, let's let's go to my channel. Or let's just search for one of my popular videos. Sometimes this happens. It could be because I accidentally uh, push on some of these buttons down here. It's a little bit annoying. Then I also do prefer the uh, the vibration, a little bit more of a hardcore vibration that you get on the Galaxy S3, but that you that may just be because I'm more used to the Galaxy S3. So I have a banana video over here. The Galaxy S3 loaded up that first. Again, the Galaxy S3 is quicker. Again, the S3 quicker. Let's see how the video quality looks like. So very, very much the same here, but bright, but bright colors. Of course, the screen is a little bit brighter here on the S3 uh, on the Pad Phone 2. It's really hard to say say which screen you do prefer. I think a lot of people will prefer the Pad Phone 2 screen, but some people that actually do love a lot of colors, they will go with the AMOLED screen. Uh, either way, the screen that you do pick as your favorite, I mean, they're both going to be amazing. They're both going to be so, so amazing. Now, if we uh, take a look here at the, the final thing in this video, uh, that's going to be some Anto 2 benchmark. So if we fire up Anto 2 over here, and uh, let's go to the test area. And test again. You can see last time I got 12,000, 16,000. Um, and uh, I really don't think that this Anto 2 benchmark program is optimized for uh, the. Uh, I don't think it's optimized for uh, the uh, the Adreno 320 GPU inside of the Pathfinder 2. And that's the thing. I mean, it's a risk that you will take if you buy the Pathfinder 2. Uh, that the GPU that not all developers are supporting it I mean, more people have the Galaxy S3 and the Mali 400 GPU has so, so much support
if I wouldn't have a tablet, if I wouldn't be an owner of a tablet, and if I did see that I can get a pad phone with a tablet, pad phone station, uh, for the same price as the Galaxy S3 4G, I probably would pick the pad phone. Yeah, even though the pad phone may not have 4G, uh, but the thing is that, that I think that's a big, big thing, um, having a tablet experience with the pad phone station. So it's really, really hard to tell which one of these is the winner. It's really, really hard and it's actually probably one of the, the most similar phones that I've ever tried. So much the same in a lot, a lot of areas. But uh, please, in the comment section down below, uh, tell me which one's your favorite. Uh, tell me what kind of future reviews you wanna see. And also, as I said in the beginning of this video, if you do leave a like on this video, it definitely, definitely will help me out to maybe win this uh, competition. Uh, so I might uh, get the pad phone too for free. And also if you leave a comment, that, that's also good. Uh, but it is amazing. I, wouldn't, I, I just wanna do better reviews and all those things all the time. So if you have any good feedback you wanna leave, uh, please go ahead and do so down below. There we go. Oh, Ashley, wow. So now we got a score of 20,976 on the Padfone 2. So uh, I'm not sure why I got 12,000 earlier, uh, but uh, maybe it's because I updated Antutu or something. But you can see here that the CPU, you get a little bit higher score here, the Crate 1, 1.5 gigahertz, a little bit higher clocked. It's better than uh, 1.4 gigahertz A9. The GPU here is actually also better. <laughs> At 320, it is better than Mali 400 MP, but developers, some developers haven't updated their games and apps for 320, so that may be a risk you have to take. Uh, RAM also should be better here on the Pathfone 2, so really, really amazing specs. The Pathfone 2, it's, it's a good, good, good purchase, definitely. Uh, I.O. also better here on the, uh, the Pathfone 2. So quick little look here at the Pathfone 2 versus the Galaxy S3. Which one is your favorite phone? Uh, yeah, tell me that in the comment section down below. And you just have an awesome day. And hopefully I will see you all in the next video. Yeah, peace.